This weekend, the Institute hands out its Jefferson Lincoln Awards, and I am honored that I'll be sharing a stage with my two next guests, Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney and House Democratic Whip James Clyburn. I want to start with this award that we're all winning for commitment to the principles of democracy. In your case, loyalty to country over party. Congressman Clyburn, you are a solid liberal. Congresswoman Cheney, you are a fiercely conservative. So let me start and let me start with you, Congressman Clyburn. How do you balance being partisan with being patriotic? Very easily. Uh, I stay true to the Constitution. I stay true uh, to what I consider the vision of this country with liberty and justice for all. Uh, and I emphasize all. Uh, I always say that my vision for public service is to make America's greatness accessible and affordable for all. If it's health care, I want it to be accessible and affordable. Housing, accessible and affordable. Education, that's just it. And if you do that, uh, remaining true to the Constitution of the United States uh, is easy. Congresswoman Cheney, how do you balance being partisan and patriotic? You know, I think a lot of it uh, has to do with being focused on substance and recognizing that there are places where we're going to differ uh, and that we ought to, um, you know, be engaged in, in fierce debates about those principles and the differences in substance and policy, but, but that at the end of the day, uh, we're all Americans, and and we have to remember that we're able to have those debates, have those discussions and, and differences of opinion, because we have a firm, solid foundation in our Constitution, and and our commitment to the Constitution's got to come above above partisanship. Congressman Clyburn, you have been in Congress for almost three decades now. Has the polarization, has the inability to solve our big national problems ever been worse? Well, not since I've been in. They got close back in 94 through 96. And I, I was here for, for the Gendrick's years, and things got very polarized. Uh, acrimony uh, was the order today. Um, but it's a little worse now, and I think it's because of the advent of social media. Uh, people tend to uh, try to answer everything in sound bites. Uh, and um, that can be very disconcerting. And so I think that that's what's caused the problem more than anything else. As someone, you know, we were all, well, I can't say that about you, Congresswoman, but uh, Congressman Clyburn and I, we're old timers. I've been in Washington, <laughs> Thanks. I think longer than you have, 40 years. And, and, you know, there were always divisions and we always argued about policy. What strikes me that's different now, and not just now, but in recent years, is we argue over facts. We argue over the truth. Congresswoman Cheney, there is talk now, talk, that January 6th was a false flag operation, that it was a case of liberals in the deep state setting up conservatives and Trump supporters. Is there any truth to that? None at all. You know, it's the same kind of thing that you hear from people who say that 9-11 was an inside job, for example. It is, um, it, it's, it's un-American uh, to be spreading those kinds of lies, uh, and they are lies. And, and we have an obligation that goes beyond partisanship uh, and, and an obligation that we share, Democrats and Republicans together, to make sure that we understand every single piece of the facts about uh, what happened that day uh, and to make sure the people who did it are held accountable. Um, and uh, to call it a false flag operation to spread those kinds of lies is really dangerous. Congressman Clyburn, I think it's fair to say that, that your endorsement of Joe Biden just before the South Carolina primary saved his campaign and propelled him to the nomination and eventually to the presidency. When you look at what's happened these last few months, maybe the last two months, between Afghanistan and inflation and problems at the border and 40 percent approval, what's going wrong with this president? Well, I don't know that anything has gone wrong. Uh, the country is in a bad place. Uh, we uh, uh, have a pandemic. I happen to chair uh, the select subcommittee on the coronavirus, and I can tell you, uh, you'd be surprised at how much went wrong uh, with trying to combat this uh, this virus, and that put everybody in a pretty bad way. 
uh, education is being called into question because kids were out of school and couldn't go to school. Uh, people out of work. Uh, and now we're trying uh, to bring the economy back, and you've got all of the, these other things happening. So the country's in a bad place. Uh, it was a real tough time to become president of the United States. Uh, just I, 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 I understand that, but I think when he was elected, people thought he's going to be a centrist, he's going to be relatively moderate, he's going to be competent, and all of that's being called into question now. Well, it's called into question because, you know, you've got a 50 50 Senate. Exactly 50-50, uh, and it's near the 50-50 House, we got on the three-vote margin. Uh, and so uh, that kind of thing uh, will uh, cause you to have to cater to one or two people. And we've seen what has happened uh, with trying to pull together uh, this so-called Build Back Better uh, legislation. Now, everybody agreed on infrastructure. You can always agree on uh, whether or not to build the roads and the bridges and uh, create uh, the water and sewage that you need and uh, fix your rail and your, uh, and your ports. Uh, but it's something else again when you start getting into new stuff like broadband. Uh, like affordable housing. All of these are infrastructure issues, but they are not traditional infrastructure issues. And so this kind of transition has got to be made. Uh, and whoever is making it uh, will have the headwinds to deal with. Congresswoman Cheney, I suspect one of the reasons that you are being honored is because you spoke out against President Trump after the insurrection, because you were one of the few Republicans who was willing to join the January 6th committee, the committee investigating what happened. The flip side of that is that you lost your leadership position among House Republicans. You face a tough primary challenge in your state of Wyoming this next year. Why wouldn't members of both parties look at your example and say, that's the last thing I want to do? Well, I, I fundamentally believe, Chris, that at the end of the day, um, the, the success of this country and the future uh, uh, and the security of our constitutional underpinnings require that there there uh, is a recognition that there are sometimes when you do have to say you know partisanship has to be put aside and uh, I think that we've got to have two strong parties in this country and I think the only way the Republican Party can go forward in strength is if we reject the lie if we reject what happened on January 6 if we reject the efforts that President Trump made uh, frankly to steal the election um, and if we tell voters the truth and if we uh, present ourselves to voters based on substance. You know, I, I believe firmly in conservative principles and ideals, and and I think those are the ones that are right for the nation. Um, but but in order to prevail, in order to win elections, um, we have to remember the most conservative of conservative ideals is embracing the Constitution and the rule of law. Uh, and so I, I just I think that that at the end of the day, that's much more important than um, than party politics. Congressman Clyburn, finally. Democrats had a bad night on Tuesday. Uh, you said recently, even before uh, Tuesday night, you questioned whether or not Democrats have developed, you put it, quote, the will to win in the 2022 midterms. What's the lesson from this week? What do Democrats have to do differently if they want a different outcome a year from now? We have to develop the will. Uh, and developing the will it means putting aside personal agenda. Uh, and that, to me, uh, has been a problem uh, for us. You know, when, when people get elected, they get elected on a certain platform, they come here, and you've got to have 218 votes uh, to get anything done. Uh, and a lot of times people have problems uh, setting aside what may have gotten them here in order uh, to get a bigger agenda moving forward. That takes a lot of willpower, and we have to develop the will. And, and is it the moderates who have to change or the progressives who are overreaching with a three-vote majority in the House and zero-vote majority? Well, you know, I always say my dad was a very conservative guy. Uh, he was a minister. Uh, but he never asked his audience for a conservative offering. He always asked for a liberal offering. And so I grew up believing that there are times when one must be conservative and there are times when you should be liberal and we have to know when to balance the, how to balance those. And what's this time? Well, this time right now uh, to, for us uh, to get beyond uh, that which divides us and find common ground. 
Congressman Clyburn, Congresswoman Cheney, thank you so much. And I am surprised and honored that I'll be sharing a stage with, <laughs> with you this weekend. See you in California. Thanks, Chris.